What I want to show you today is one of the most significant advancements that has happened in brain surgery. A uh, few years back, it was even unthinkable that an endoscope could be passed in inside the skull and into the brain to remove the brain tumor. I want to show you a case of colloid cyst, which is a tumor in the central most part of the brain. If you look at the skull and consider that it is a sphere, this tumor, which is a benign tumor, it is not cancer, it is located at the center of the brain, center of the skull and of course center of the brain too. It is a very dangerous tumor because it occupies such a location which is surrounded by emotional circuits, emotion fiber circuit, memory circuit and it occupies a small area which lies in the pathway of the brain fluid flow. So it can suddenly obstruct the flow of brain fluid or CSF and it can cause massive increase in the pressure inside the skull. So these tumors can be, should be removed in time. And uh, I'm going to take this as an example because I want to demonstrate this uh, surgery to the science enthusiasts, students and the public at large. And I want to show you how a brain endoscope looks. So here is a brain endoscope which we use to reach inside. This is the size of my finger. If you take a close up here, perhaps you can see the size of the endoscope, the channel which is seen as a black uh, area and a scope which is so tiny that perhaps it is very difficult to see with the camera but it's a very very tiny endoscope and we pass this endoscope of course there are specific coordinates which we study the MRI if required we use what is called as a navigation machine and uh, we direct this endoscope exactly at the point of the pathology through a very small opening in the skull through this endoscope, we can pass very small instruments. These are of two types. The first instrument that I want to show you is a stiff instrument. It's not a malleable instrument. So this is a forceps. Can you see this? This is a forceps. So this is a forceps. I am showing you here. Very small and instrument channel through which I am passing and you can see that this forceps has come out and with the help of this forceps I can operate here. Of course all the while a camera is attached here, uh, the screen is in front of me and I pass the instruments through this channel and the surgery being done is seen to me on the screen in front of my eyes. So this is how we operate inside the brain with the endoscope. There are some instruments which are malleable. If you see this instrument, it is so thin, this is a malleable instrument. And of course it is a very high quality maximanship, it's a German instrument and this is passed again through the channel. This is passed again through the same channel and you can see that this instrument is opening and closing to grasp tissues. Similarly, we have scissors which can cut. We also have bipolar forceps to coagulate which I will show you now. This is also passed through the same channel and we can do the coagulation with this bipolar forceps or we can hold tissues as required. There is another bipolar forceps which is called as trigger flex. Now this is a very peculiar kind of instrument and it can be passed and when I press here a very small part of the instrument of this trigger flex uh, comes out like this in a curved fashion so it can be used to dissect the tissues and cauterize with the help of bipolar current. So these are all the technologies like uh, this is based on radio frequency, uh, this is based on very high quality optics, this is based on very high quality uh, metal and maximanship. So these are all the instruments of the modern era and they are used to perform brain surgeries. We have been performing endoscopic brain surgeries for the last 10 years and uh, the tumors which are approachable with endoscope uh, and amenable to be operated with endoscope, we routinely operate with 
endoscopic brain surgery. So this is the picture uh, seen through the endoscope of the innermost part of the brain. And now what we are seeing here is the colloid cyst, this bluish tumor, which is filled with a mucinous secretions of the cyst wall. And as you can very clearly see, this is the area of foramen of Monroe. And uh, through the foramen of Monroe, CSF passes from one cavity to another. This tumor sits exactly in that area and blocks the flow of CSF, causing serious and severe increase in the pressure inside the brain. Here we are coagulating the surface of the tumor. Remember that we have not uh, done proper craniotomy or big hole in the skull, but just done a small opening and we have passed the endoscope through that small opening of about one centimeter. And here we have opened the cyst and you can very clearly see a yellowish honey-like secretions or collection within the tumor and it is flowing out under pressure and as it is coming out the tumor is getting decompressed and uh, now we are sucking the insides of the tumor with a suction tube the suction tube is passed within the tumor as you can see and we are sucking out the contents of this tumor and as we are doing this you can very clearly see that the foramen that is the area which was blocked by the tumor is slowly getting opened up you can still see the uh, yellowish thick honey like contents of the tumor flowing out and those secretions or collection is getting sucked this is not a cancerous tumor but it is sitting in such a area that it actually acts like a time bomb. You know, if it is not removed in time, then uh, it can be life-threatening. You can see continuous suction and decompression of the tumor. And now the tumor is almost completely decompressed. Now we want to get hold of the wall of the tumor and slowly resect it and burn the remaining wall of the tumor. What you see here, the pinkish frond-like structure is the uh, area which produces the CSF. It is called as choroid plexus. And now we are holding the wall of the colloid cyst with a bipolar forceps and we are coagulating the wall of the tumor with this forceps so that it will not you know, grow again. I have held the cyst wall and uh, we are going to cut this cyst wall completely. The remaining area which will be a very small area will be coagulated with radio frequency as you can see here and in the end you can see the wall is resected, the area is coagulated and this foramen which was blocked is opened up.